Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Green Leaf, Season 4, Episode 3, Visions and Dreams. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. Grace goes to Phoenix to see AJ in the work release facility. And when she goes to the front counter, she asks the gentleman, which I might add, the actor that was at the counter was thicker than a snickle with that beard and that bald head. Hello. But anyway, she goes up to the front counter. I'm sorry, I had to say some of them. Excuse me, can I say, oh. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> anyway, she goes to the front desk asking him for AJ and he calls him down to come down. When he arrives, he's not too excited to see Grace. He's really upset and he has every right to be upset. When he's speaking to her, he's like, look, I didn't know you were coming here to talk to me. I just want you to leave the money. I just want to move on with my life. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. And literally Grace is struck with just sadness and fear and she can't say anything because AJ has every right to be upset, to be confused, to be sad, all of these emotions and then all of a sudden he felt like Grace is just popping out out of nowhere and he believes that she's doing this out of bad conscience about it instead of being genuine and sincere about his well-being. Lady May tells Bishop I had a dream and I had God sent me a dream. And he's like, oh, 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 really? Okay, what was the dream about? And she goes into this description that she's in a museum. She's looking at all of these paintings on the wall. And then all of a the sudden there is some commotion in the background and everybody is huddled over huddled around this one piece. And she gets into the huddle and she wants to see what everybody is looking at. And it is a torn picture of Jesus and Bishop is on the ground and he has a knife in his hand indicating that he's split the picture of Jesus and it's all these pe people around him that are viewing this and that he's saddened by what he's done and it's created a ruckus or it's created a tension in tearing apart people's interest in maybe their faith and she said this vision what is telling me is that you should apologize to the church. You should let everybody know how badly you felt about what happened. And Bishop is just like, glad it was a dream. Yeah, not doing that. Carissa, she is so goo goo and woo and letting Jacob know that somebody is interested in the land. And Jacob, instead of being upset, he just says, well, how much do they how much are they asking for? How, what's going on? And he doesn't seem like he's upset. He's very open ears and he wants to know where she's coming from. And she says, it's way more than we pay for it. And it's way more than it's, you know, than it's worth. And she's kissy kissy on him. And he has this look like, mm, you know, I'll hear you out. Which is surprising to the viewers at the time. We have Charity and her friend. I can't think of his name, but he works with her um, in the choir. And they're listening to this Harmony and Hope default-esque song that's played in all the Harmony and Hope locations. And Charity is just like, what is this? It just is lacking so much umph and so much soul and so much energy. And she says, you know, I just need to get in contact with Judy and I need to let her know we're not singing this. And he says, no, 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 no. My instructions are if somebody wants to communicate with Judy that I get that information to Grace and Grace will communicate that to Judy and please don't mess up the fluidity and the procedure in communicating with Judy because it will get me in trouble so don't do it and she agrees and says okay you know I'll talk to Grace about it but this song this song that I'm listening to it got to go 
we see a lady walk into the church and she seems like she's looking around and she really can't find someone and she stops Korean and she says have you seen Grace I'm really trying to get in contact with her I have an appointment with her later but I really need to go over some information with her is she here and Corinne says she's not here but let me give her a phone call she's actually out of town she says, I just I just don't understand why she's out of town. I really need to, to talk with her. And while they're conversing, we have Phil that comes up and says, hey, what's the problem? And she says, hey, you know, I really was trying to get in contact with Grace. And he says, well, well Grace, why? What's going on, Mrs. Williams? So it's evident that he knows who she is. She says, well, I really would rather speak, you know, to Grace about that. And he says, no, 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 come into my office. We can get that taken care of. Corinne, she seems really bothered that Phil is just coming in to just swoop and talk to her without maybe consulting other people and other pastors and maybe just talking with Lady May or somebody. The fact that he's just taking on this responsibility, it kind of just concerns her. So we have Corinne, she calls Lady May and she says... Hi, I really need to talk to you. Grace isn't here. She's out of town. And I have a visitor here. I have Misty Williams. She was supposed to speak with Grace, but she's not here. And it's just really odd because I don't see Misty's appointment on appointment on Grace's calendar. She kind of just walked in. I'm confused. Help me out here. While Lady May is on to the rescue to church to find out what's going on with Misty Williams, we cut to a shot where Jacob is speaking to his father just to get a little advice and telling him that Carissa wants to sell the land because she really wants that money so they could get a house. He doesn't want to sell the land, but whatever it takes to keep his house happy and calm and whatever it takes to hush her up and just to have peace he's willing to do it and his father tells him it's not about the house it's not about peace if you get that house you still won't have peace at home because it's more than that it's the drama of what happened not too long ago it's the drama of you guys moving into the house that she didn't want before it's the emotional baggage of the affairs you had in the past it's her feeling that you're not paying that much attention to her and she's last priority it's so much more than her wanting to get that house so in other words this is a piece that she feels that she will have some control over it's something she wants is something that she demands and in order to get that she has to keep churning and churning squeaky wheels get oiled correct so he's telling him it's not about that house and if you get that if you sell the land and you get that house it's showing her that this is a piece that I have to gain control when the core issue is you need to spend more time with your wife. You need to stop treating your wife like it's something that you have to do to check off the list and, oh, I spent time with her and I spoke with her when I got home. No, love your wife more. Don't sell the land. Grace finally gets a chance to speak with AJ because she pleads for an opportunity to explain herself of why she wasn't there as he got older in his life period. So he gives her a moment and she explains to him this situation. She brings him up to speed of why she gave him up. And he seems to give her an ear. And he seems a little bit open to understanding about why she did what she did. And while they're talking, they notice that people that are also staying at the facility, they're getting in arguments. It's loud. It's really not peaceful. You can tell it's an on and off thing with maybe the confrontations that go on there. And Grace and AJ agree and kind of have this mental note of knowing we got to get you somewhere to stay. The scene that gave me quite a chuckle. We have Zara. She walks into the church looking like a scene from the movie The Craft. And she comes scrolling in there in this white getup that she had. I don't know, maybe from Woodstock years ago that somebody wore. And Charity's giving her a look like, 
you know, are you here for little saints? Like, you know, what's going on? She says, I'm actually here for the eye candy. Um, my father is supposed to be talking to Dante and I want to be here. I want to be in my father's office waiting for the time that he arrives. And Charity says, well, okay, <laughs> you know, you get that. And wow, Charity, what a response to give to your niece. I mean, I know she's technically an adult, right? But that would have been the perfect time for you to step in and kind of talk to her and counsel her about, eh, this is not like a pickup spot and let's focus on you healing and getting right from your past situation before you hop into something else. But their writing lets us know that Charity has blinders on and she could care less about what everybody else is doing. Charity is looking for Grace. She can't find her. Phil is speaking to Misty. And you could tell Charity was on a mission to speak with Grace about the song, wanting to speak to Judy. And she has no patience. She goes around that whole fluidity and that whole chain of command. And she emails Miss Judy herself. Grace and AJ, unfortunately, don't have any luck in looking for an apartment for him because of his record and the realtors and all of the people that are trying to sell or that they're inquiring about. They're saying, oh, no, the owner is saying no, you know, because of that record. And in the midst of them not having any luck, we see Zora. She's in her dad's office and she is waiting on Mr. Dante. Dante walks in. He sees her. They introduce themselves to each other. And as he's doing that, we see a spark of hope in Zora's eyes and thinking she's about to snatch up her new boo. But the problem is, is Dante's boo, Miss Nikki. And Nikki strolls in and gives him that hug like, yes, this is my man. And how are you? Zora's bubble is popped. But she's still, she's still there, and she's not 100% defeated. She just wants to be around them. You could tell she wants to be in their presence, somebody her age, somebody she can relate to, somebody that's not, quote-unquote, stuffy with, quote, church stuff all the time. So she seems like she's a magnet when it comes to being in their presence and being around Dante, even though he has this boo named Nikki. And he explains explains and talks about Nikki and gloats about her. Oh yeah, she knows this and she's on top of the latest blogs and I even got this high rise apartment and she's helped me to decorate it in such a way. And he's just really, really pushing for Nikki and he's just really exalting her to just be this wonderful girl. Uh, but I got some side notes I wanna talk about later on about this character. Until Jacob arrives, we have Zora and she's entertaining Dante and Nikki and they're getting lattes and different teas or whatever that they're sipping on and they're talking and Jacob shows up. And when Jacob shows up, he gives Dante a pound and they say, hey, I need to go talk, let's go talk. While they get shifted away, we have Nikki and she's talking to Zora. And Zora's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm just being me and I'm in the church and all this other stuff. And Nikki says, so I'm guessing you still stay with your parents? And she says, well, mm, kinda, I got this cabin. Nikki says, okay, well, let's go. Let's go see that because clearly she's bored at this church and she wants to be entertained somewhere else. And as she gets up, Nikki is walking a little ways in front of her and turns around to Zora like, you coming? Like, uh, come on. So we automatically see this follow the leader concept already churning with Zora and Nikki. Zora and Nikki, they're at her cabin. They're talking. They're having a little girl talk. Zora has showing her some tricks about how to lay baby hairs down and maybe some little cute little changes she can make with a rat tail comb and making little swoops on the side of her hair. And I noticed that Miss Ch that Miss Nikki, excuse me, is walking closer and closer to Miss Zora. Now I knew exactly where this was going, and she says, "That's really sweet. You should make you should do a vlog. Oh, that's really great. You're really great at those things. It's awesome." She says, no, that's not something people would look at. And Nikki says, well, I would look at it. And as she's getting, giving her these compliments, she's getting closer and closer and more sensual and more connected with Zara. And Zara is just really like, 
Mm-hmm, thanks. And she gets so close to her as they're speaking, she just proceeds to just pick up a little pendant that Zara is wearing, and it's very sensual and very persuasive in saying, hey, check out this door is open with interest. And you could tell there was some tension in the air when it came to possible attraction, possible conflicting emotions about how I'm feeling about this young woman standing next to me and touching me. Hmm. And before she can figure that out, we have Dante that walks in and says, hey, so y'all just gonna come to the cab and not invite anybody? All right, Nikki, let's go. Nikki grabs her stuff and says, all right, girl, I'll talk to you later. And Zora is sitting there with possibly damp underwear? I don't know. But she looks really conflicted. Lady May and Bishop, they play Miss Misty Williams a visit to her home because they really want to get down to the root of why she spoke to Phil and not them because even though they're not active in the church or as active as they used to she really wants to know what's going on with Misty and if they can help when they get there Lady May is talking to Misty and she's expressing this to her and she seems really reluctant to share the information. She's like, no, that's okay. I spoke to Phil about it. It's really not a big deal. So Lady May says to Bishop, well, you know, um, why don't you give us a minute? And he says, well, where am I supposed to go? Where do you suggest I go? She says, well, you could go to the vehicle and, you know, get it warmed up and maybe go around, you know, because it is a little cold outside. And he's just like... Mm. And he, she jiggles the keys like, here you go. Let me, let, let me do this. Go, go, go on outside. Lady May proceeds to talk with Misty outside, and she says, "I know we're not as active as we used to be in the church, but I would have least thought with the past that you could come to me and we could speak as women and just talk about whatever's bothering you." And she says, "I just don't want to go any further because I don't want to embarrass myself and I don't want to embarrass you." And Lady May says, well, okay, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. But Misty says that I was wanting to speak with Grace because later on tonight, she was supposed to accompany me and Fred, and we were going to have an intervention with Denise. And Lady says, uh, Lady May says, oh, was it, was it the pills? Is she on the pills again? And she says, yes, she's on the pills again. And, you know, we just wanted Grace to be there for support. And Lady May says, well, I mean, I can accompany, accompany you there. And she says, well, no, we're comfortable with Phil. And since you seem to be so clueless about what's going on, let me just inform you. The reason why not only Fred and I voted you out um, for the new leaders of Harmony and Hope was because we actually feel that you were aware and you knew about Mac and what would happen to those girls and the scholarship money that you issued out was hush money. And Lady May says, I didn't know. And she says, well, that's hard to believe. So in other words, people around the church, a lot of people around the church had an inclination and a feeling that Lady May knew about what her brother was doing and that scholarship money was hush money. And she was doing any and everything that she could to protect him. And from the outside looking in, that's plausible that someone would think that way. And she says, all I've ever done was wanted to help and serve, and I didn't know. And Misty says, well, that's not what everybody else believed, and I figured you should know what everybody was thinking about you this entire time. It is what it is. Lady May, she calls Grace in disgust, like, you need to get your tail back here. I don't know where you at, but you got to hurry up and get back to this church because there's just so much going on. And by the way, did you forget that you were supposed to meet with Misty Williams to talk about Denise and the intervention? And she just goes into this, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I'll be back when I can. And Lady May is like, be back where you can. Well, where are you? Like, you need to get back here tomorrow because it's just a lot going on. And I don't know what you're doing, but you need to get back. Charity is confronted by Phil. And Phil walks in and says, um, you sent an email to Judy? 
And she goes, yeah, I sent an email to Judy because that song was treacherous. It was terrible. And it won't be sung here. So, yes, I emailed her. Yeah. And he says, well, why did you do that? Because you can't contact Judy. And you did. And we've got to discuss that. She said, yeah, we got to discuss that song. He says, no, 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 no. I'm talking about you. You contacted Judy when those weren't your instructions. You have to understand, Judy is Bob's daughter. So we know that Judy is Bob's daughter, and it's possible that the reason why we're hearing this song over and over again with Harmony and Hope, and it's pretty much like the default song to all of the churches, eh, is because she got some cush with her dad. He tells her, we don't go straight to her. It's something that I'll communicate. It's something you need not to go straight to Judy about. Pretty much being the step and fetch it of who contacts her and who contacts Bob and just this median of a person and communicating how things work. Phil tells Charity, hey, if you want that role, you got to play the game, okay? You got to be the big girl in this whole situation and follow directions. And she tells him, well, maybe you can tell me why Charity is in Phoenix. And he's dumbfounded like she's in Phoenix. And he says, yeah, you know, there's some information that you didn't know. Now, don't you feel bad about kind of going off on me a minute ago? And she's basically saying, hey, I just gave you some information. So watch how you confront me with little mistakes I make here and there. Lady May is in a room. She's looking at old projector film looking at family photos, looking at faith, and she's sitting there with tears, and Bishop comes in and he says, you know, that dream that you were telling me about earlier, I do think that was for me, and this is what I think it means. She goes, no, 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 that dream was meant for me. And do you think that I really knew? And he says, do I think that you knew what? She says, do you really think that I knew about Mac and that I knew about the girls? And he says, well, no, you didn't know. And she says, well, I did. And I didn't. Maybe I knew and maybe I was telling myself a lie for such a long time that maybe I really believed it. And she's really conflicting with the emotions of, did I know the truth and I hid it from myself? Did, did, did in some way, shape or form, did I get some type of clue or information and I ignored it? So she's really battling with, now I'm confused in my actions and if, if there was something I could have done to stop it. And Bishop says, you didn't know. You lived your life in a way thinking it wasn't true about him so in other words don't beat yourself up about it and she's just really in limbo about what she learned from misty and she says i just can't believe it now it's just it makes sense all what people are thinking of me as this monster smiling and being in the church and them thinking she's covering up a monster and she's giving people hush money with scholarship money all oh, what they must think of me so it is tearing her up inside not only about her emotions and conflicting emotions about if she knew or if she didn't know but also what people are perceiving about her that isn't true jacob tells Carissa he doesn't want to sell that land and ooh, I know that's gonna kick up some dust. We have Lady May, she's in a room with the family and she's looking at some photos and but before they can get the projector started, she hears something in the hallway and she asks Grace, Grace, is that you? Are you home? And Grace has that look like, oh, why did they have to hear me coming in this house? But they all live together and of course, of course they're gonna hear each other. So she comes in and as she comes in, she's noticing that they're looking at the still uh, film that goes into the projector. They start looking at the film and looking at photos of faith and family and all of these people. 
and Lady May has comfort that it feels like the family is one finally and that they're in the same room even though there's another physical present presence that isn't there that must have really did something to grace because we see the closing scene that grace calls aj he's still upset because she had to leave and come back home and deal with everything that was a ruckus at the church and she tells AJ, I want you to come home. And I had a feeling that that was going to happen because there's only, that, and that was the end of the episode. There's only so long that you're gonna keep this secret about your son. And now that you've come to peace with other things, Grace, you really got to start purging the truth in what you did because you can hide and hide and hide the truth for as long as you can, you think, but it will always come back to haunt you. One of the things that I wanted to discuss with some side notes and estimates for the future is that Nikki, Nikki and Zara. So what I think about that development Nikki seems to be the herd and the gatherer. Reason why I say that, you usually have people who are around celebrities, artists who are the yes men. Wouldn't surprise me if Nikki is the one that catches and herds what Dante likes. Not only what Nikki likes, but what Dante likes. If Nikki can get into her head, into Zara's head, she can be the person that can give information that they need from the church. She can be the type of person that can cover for Dante and letting uh, uh, Jacob know certain things uh, to lie. Like, oh, Dante's here, but he's really there. It's already evident that Zora likes the both of them. And she's willing to do any and everything to hang out with them, be around them. She looks like she's at that point to where she wants to break out and have a lot of fun and do what she wants to do. Because there's not anybody around her anymore that's her same age that wants to hang out. So she's really feeling alone despite being around a lot of people all the time instead of being around her family all the time. So my prediction is still the same that Jacob will fall in line with stop being the holier than thou guy that he thought because I still think Carissa, um, even with everything that she wants, he will falter with being in that environment that Dante is in, which can be very, very tempting. Also with Carissa, she's not really being a team player still. And I wonder what her actions are going to be even after Jacob says again, that he doesn't want to sell the land because he kind of gave her some hope and giggling with her and kissing her and making her think that they were gonna sell the land. Now it's a no again. So will she just ignore him and sell the land? And I think she will because she's had enough. She's fed up. Just him telling her that he's gonna spend more time with her, uh, that ain't enough. Charity throughout this episode continues to fish and dig for information, especially when it comes to Grace. And even after learning Grace didn't see Bob, because she asked her about it, Grace, you know, did you see Bob in Phoenix? And Grace says, well, you know, I didn't see Bob. That's not what I was doing. She's still fishing for it. The minute that Grace brings home AJ, Charity within lightning speed will share that information with Phil. But I believe Phil and Bob already know her dirt. I believe that Bob and Phil already know what's going on because in the previous episode, if you remember, Bob says, we've been following you since Phoenix, which is very precise in what they possibly could know. Do they know the secrets between her and Noah? Do they know about AJ? I think they do. They're just wanting to pull out the cards or pull out the, what they need at the precise moment to make people falter and fall. They've done this several times before with other church churches. So I know they're setting them up 
to watch them fall. And they know when to do that at the right time. And when they do it, it's gonna be a big bang of what do we do now? Because we have all of these things, even within the church, to make them not even come to Lady May for advice, come in the bishop, yet alone Jacob. So, hmm, I'm really excited to see what might happen. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. I know I got a few messages of people saying, Bunny, I didn't know that you posted another video and then I saw you posted another video yesterday. I didn't see it. You have to click on that little bell and it notifies you when I make other posts. So you have to select that. Also follow me on Instagram. The same profile name, official bun underscore E. Comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys later. Bye.